Good morning, Portsmouth. I'm going to call the May 4th, 2020 Parking, Traffic, and Safety Committee meeting to order. Would you please take the roll? Mary Lou McElway. Here. Steve Pesci. Mark Syracusa. Here. Harold Whitehouse. Here. Erica Wygonick. Here. Deputy Police Chief Mike Maloney. Here. Fire Chief Bill McQuillan. Here. Public Works Director Peter Rice. Here. Stephanie Casella, Planning Department. Here. Chairman Andrew Bagley. Here. All right, and if we could oh, look at the uh, financial report. As you can see, we're at 90% of budget, um, only 75% of the way through the year. So the numbers are looking good. If somebody wants to accept them. So moved. Yeah. I, I just got one question. Sure. Yeah, Peter, are we still under budget and on, on time in a high level garage? Yeah, the repairs. Uh, seeing as how it's a three-year project, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> three-year project? Is it really? It's yeah. a three-year project. Three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. As long as we're working safely, that's the most important. Yep. Every time I see on TV, you know, something happening in another city. Yeah, that's uh, why we're doing this repairs. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. And if Peter, oh, go ahead, Mary. Mr. Look. Chair, I had a question. I think it was specific to Ben, who isn't here today. It's on the... Just um, it's behind here. here. <laughs> ben, right there. Slid by you. Like behind me. <laughs> behind me. <laughs> okay, so I can bring it up now or, or under miscellaneous, but it has to do with the receipts from the kiosks. Receipts from the kiosk. Which kiosk are we talking about? The meter kiosk. Oh, the oh, meters okay. downtown. All the parking ki yeah. kiosks. Ben, will you be here at the end of the meeting? Sure. All right, why don't we we'll do, do that then? Sure. And if nobody seconded the motion? Yeah, there's no second. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving on. Now we have uh, public comment. So if you uh, have anything you want to speak to on the agenda, just please come up, uh, state your name and address, and if you can keep your uh, message, you know, five minutes or less would be ideal. Uh, do I sit or sit? Yeah, sit at any of the microphones. Good morning, everyone. My name is Barbara Pambukas, and I'm a resident of Cut Street, have been there for 36 years, and I represent um, the Cuts Cove neighborhood. And um, I'm here today, the last time I made a pres presentation at this committee was 2014. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, our concern is the increased traffic, speed of traffic, and noise um, having a negative impact on our neighborhood. In particular, the intersections of Maplewood and Cut Street, and the intersection of Maplewood and the North, um, the Route 1 North bypass ramp. Um, several years ago, with the construction of um, reconstruction of Maplewood, a um, little island that is um, on Cut Avenue was removed. And I believe it was removed because of truckers I'm um, hitting the curb. But it was a very small thing, but it protected that median. Um, and what is happening now is when we have m many cars coming from downtown at certain times of the day. Unfortunately, no one understands how to make an appropriate left-hand turn. So they're coming up at a high rate of speed over the 25 miles per hour and they're cutting that corner off at a 45 degree angle instead of what you're, turn, what you're supposed to do. And there's no visibility because of the building there. It's become a real hazard um, for anyone that's trying to come off that um, intersection. People look at you like you're in the way. Well, we're at the line. 
The other thing that I've noticed is that um, when the island was removed, a yellow paint that pretended it was an island, but because of traffic going over it, there's no signage. There's no line. Um, the other concern that we have is what it will happen when the buildings continue to go up in the um, uh, Russell Street area. Um, all that traffic is coming our way. Our um, suggestions would be a traffic observation um, on that in that area. Again, we would recommend a street light or four-way stop signs. And bring back the asphalt island on Cuts Ave, or at least some bollards or simplify, simply paint the island. And we also ask for regular maintenance and brush cutting and clearing of the um, wooded area so that we could see the traffic coming. Has anyone here ever um, used that intersection? Does anyone else have problems getting across that intersection? So would you agree that something needs to be done before, before we continue on? Is that the last time I brought this to the attention um, at, of, let's see, all of you were there at the meeting at New Franklin School back last fall. And I haven't seen anything done. So it would be nice, please, at least do an observation, help us with um, the lower lying fruit and paint. Okay, any questions for me? So in public comment, we typically just, it's only one way. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, yes. um, but we'll, you know, probably get this on a future agenda. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Ann Weidman, 44 Lookout Lane. Uh, I'm one of three people who started Access Navigators mm, eight years ago, maybe. We're an organization that helps people stay connected to their communities, um, people who live with disabilities. Over the years, we have worked successfully on a, a lot of things with the city of Portsmouth, particularly with Peter Rice and Public Works. Uh, I get phone calls from Peter. We've helped the Public Works choose picnic tables for downtown. We've helped um, give opinions on outdoor dining. We've given opinions on accessible playgrounds. And today, we're talking about adding accessible parking to Prescott Park. Uh, we always ask for things that are easy to do. It's generally things that are no cost. Because we're so connected to people who live with disabilities, we get their opinions, and the opinion is that the biggest pain point in town is not the brick sidewalks or a step into the restaurant. Our biggest pain point for people with disabilities is parking. So um, when I said what parking, they all talk about Prescott Park and the Arts Festival and how far that, that area is from parking garages. So it's on your agenda today. I, I'm hoping we see a positive vote. It would be a really cool thing to add to Portsmouth. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne. Good morning, my name is Roger Gown. I live hey, at Roger, yeah. can you move the microphone up? Sure. How's that? Yeah, okay. Great. Good morning, my name is Roger Gown. I live in Brentwood. My wife and I have been longtime season subscribers to the Prescott Park Arts Festival. I can tell you that year over year it becomes more and more difficult to park close enough to Prescott Park to attend events there. Um, the solution that Ann came up with to in double the, park, the handicap parking at the park itself I think is brilliant and I support it. I hope you will support it. Um, I would ask for some careful consideration, design consideration, um, squeezing as many spaces as, into that area as possible um, isn't necessarily the best goal. It's important that people actually be able to use those spaces. So for example, I need an access aisle next to my, next on the left side of my car so that I can get my wheelchair in and out of the car. Um, that's, that's usually a three foot aisle. Um, so if you squeeze lots of spaces into that area, um, you may actually create a lot of spaces that aren't actually usable. So I'd ask you to be careful about that. Other than that, I'm very much in support of this, and I appreciate your time. Thanks. 
Thank you, Roger. Do we have anybody on Zoom? Oh, I'm sorry, Annie. <laughs> I didn't see you because you weren't wearing your high res anymore. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I know this is um, there's no decision being made on um, this item today, but I thought I would speak because I can. I'm um, Anne Fubo at 160 Bartlett Street, um, and I'm here to talk about the Bartlett Street reconstruction project, especially the intersection at Bartlett and Thornton with a mini roundabout. Um, <clears throat> Over the past year and a half, um, the city has held public meetings with residents and has asked feedback um, regarding the Bartlett Street reconstruction project. And we, the Portsmouth residents, gave feedback to the city, agreeing that there's a problem <clears throat> with speeding on our street. Based on data collected by the city, we know that posting speed limits without physical traffic calming measures do nothing to make the streets safer. Um, and the intersection of Bartlett and Thornton is most likely the, one of the most policed intersections in the city, yet um, data shows that cars regularly blow through the stop signs. So the current temporary mini roundabout, as you know, <laughs> is a pilot program, and um, I hope that everyone know that we just need to have a look at it with an open mind and objectivity and we need to get measurable data from it um, before making a decision. Personally, I'm not for or against the roundabout. I don't have any feelings about traffic signs, but I really care about safety. And a waste of my taxpayer money would be to go back to the ways that obviously have been proven not to work. Um, so I trust city staff, I trust this committee to um, do their jobs and the Portsmouth residents um, to keep an open mind. So thank you. That was for me as a Bartlett Street resident. And then me with my Sabre hat, I'm on the Seacoast Area Bicycle Riders um, Board and I'm very excited about the bike rodeo and the mayor's ride on Saturday, May 20th. And I want to say thank you to the city for helping us organize this event. And I hope I will see everybody on their bikes or e-bikes on the 20th. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Annie. Uh, we've got two on Zoom. Jeff Moretti. All right. Go ahead, Jeff. Now he's gone. Uh, <laughs> we've got William Davis. Hello. Uh, yeah, that's me. Good morning. Uh, Bill Davis, 339 Bartlett Street. I live adjacent to the um, intersection of Thornton and Bartlett, and I am calling in support of the temporary roundabout or the trial roundabout. It seems, by my observation, to be partially solving some of the issues on Bartlett with uh, traffic calming. And um, I'm very happy with its results, and I endorse its continuance if it proves to be successful. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. And did we get Jeff back? Um, if, if you're out there, Jeff, and you managed to log back on, we'll try to reopen public comment for you. Um, I know the technical difficulties sometimes pop up. Um, but with that, uh, seeing no other people on Zoom, I'll close the public comment. And we will move on to new business. Um, item A, Hanover Street, request to renew valet license by the 100 Club. I'd await a motion to move to approve the renewal of the valet license for one year. So moved. Yeah. Second. Any discussion? I'm just assuming it's the same old, same old. No yeah. changes in it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We greatly yeah. increased the price last year, so right. it's just the same as what we did last year. Right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, two. Uh, Prescott Park parking lot proposal to provide additional handicap parking <laughs> for events and discussion of inclusion of lot in Zone A by Chairman. Uh, sample motion: move to approve handicap parking spaces during events. Uh, motion to motion to move to approve an additional handicap parking spaces during a seconds. Okay. My second. 
and discussion. <coughs> Can I just ask a clarifying question? Yes. How many total spots are there right now? Interestingly, it says 15 in the packet. Four. Yes, there are. It, it's on the screen there now. So currently there are 10 regular spaces and five handicap spaces. Uh, and this diagram here shows restriping it in order to provide 16 handicap spaces using current ADA standards for access aisle widths and uh, numbers of van spaces. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Carol? Yeah, yeah one, one question, please. Uh, when it talks about events, during events, now what are they referring to? So I could speak broadly to that. Um, I think the idea is to give staff as much discretion as possible, yeah. um, but the general consensus was major events, okay. um, so concerts and plays. Peter, do you yeah, have an understanding of? I, th I think it's going to be a work in process over the summer to figure out I see. when it makes sense and when it doesn't make sense. It was, you know, mostly the Prescott Park Arts Festival events, yeah. where they draw large crowds and where you know folks need access. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's additional events uh, that occur. Um, some some events utilize the parking lot itself, um, so that would require us looking to, to locate uh, handicapped parking elsewhere uh, to provide uh, spaces. Uh, but for the most part, it's intended for activities that don't uh, impact the parking lot, um, uh, All right. but that, that do have a demand, such as the arts festivals. So just using a little common sense. It's the most important, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Erica? I'm just curious about the logistics of this. How are we going to stripe the lot so that it sounds like yeah. it's only going to be, they're only going to all be accessible spaces during events. How are they going to be striped such that when it's not events, like how do we have aisle? are we going to have aisles but not put the little blue? Yeah, I mean, that's... Imagine a soccer field that's also a lacrosse field that's also a Yeah, it doesn't work field. well. <laughs> well, but it does work. Well, that's with officials and stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm less worried about. There'd be flip signs okay. um, that make it clear that it's handicap only. Okay. Um, you know, it's, is there a perfect solution? No. Obviously not. not. Um, so, you know, we will work and, and adjust as we learn. Um, we do better. Great. Mark? Your flip sign is the ones that it folds out like the church on Summer Street? It'd be a most likely a sign that has hinges that's on a post. It, okay. And they're like mobile, a mobile sign? No. That, no. Is, that is static. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe, maybe not this location, but has the city ever approved to say that you can use, like if there's a funeral on Summer Street, they put the placards, they put the, yeah. the signs out that says handicap. Could a, a location like that have that happen? So you'll see 10 through maybe 16 have handicap as paint, but then one through eight or nine would have, for a special event, would have a mobile sign just like the church would. That's more or less what we're presenting in a sense. That's inclusion. I'm just saying if it's, it's well, if, yeah. if that group needs it, which is handicap, and they need the space, it can just be for that event, so you put it out. It, it's a question that I uh, I would have to accommodate a special event for handicaps, not specifically at this location, but as a general question. We'll you know we'll come up with a solution. I mean, Eric, you know, it's this Eric and Ben. That's what they do for work. Yeah. So and we did do this this year for the holiday parade. So we created a special accessible viewing area at the top of the Bridge Street lot with temporary accessible spaces, which kind of got this whole thing started. Okay. So we are looking at ways that we can improve for events where it makes sense, but um, you know, there's a lot of logistics involved in figuring things out on the ground and on the fly, so to speak. Mary Lou? Yes, I'm wondering if the meter readers enforce this. How does this get enforced? I often see cars that are not handicaps parking in the spaces. So this and is currently not metered parking. It's two-hour parking, right. non-metered. The idea is, and because it's in the park, there's probably legal uh, issues to look into, is that we would then start to meter the spaces as a zone A at some point in the future, and we would use the funding um, from that metering of the spaces to accomplish the accessible parking because there will be costs involved and uh, staff right. time and things like that. So it would be 
one way to one make sure that we now have enforcement there so that the accessible spaces are being used by uh, people with accessible placards and two um, the initiative would more or less self-fund itself but that's a that's in well, the future. that's a future right so I'm just wondering about how we do it now just enforcing that it's handicapped spaces for handicap tags and we would have our enforcement officers put a sign on it. yeah okay the sign it's that was my know, question it's enforced that's yeah. my question that's yeah. the answer thank you yep yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, somebody called me the other day and said uh, they was in another city. They didn't name the city, but uh, the, the the blinking speed limit it was blinking, and and if it was under the speed limit, another sign was blinking. Thank you. That's all I said. It was thank you. Yeah. That'll be a. That's another another. Charge. Something for Peter to consider when he purchases you, the next you round of signs. Drive down Maple <laughs> Avenue. And you're driving the speed face. limit. It says thank you. Yeah. Advanced programming. <laughs> All right. Um, any more discussion on this? Yeah. All. Oh, Erica. Oh, I was going to say aye. Sorry, I got it. Oh, All those in favor? <laughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? Yeah. It happens. All right. Now we're moving on to old business. Um, Islington Street and Bartlett Street intersection request for pedestrian improvements by residents. And I believe Eric has a report back on some adjustments that were made. Yes. Uh, we took a look at the signal operations. Let me bring that picture up. So uh, we, have, we have the signal that went in a couple years ago at uh, Islington and Barlett. And we, it was installed with the uh, timings and phasings as, as designed. And now that we've had it in place, we've been able to take a look at the data that we collect from there because it's a, it's a video system. We, have, we collect uh, vehicle turning movement counts on a 24-hour basis there. So we looked at the base of the, how, the, how it's operating and the timings, and we were able to uh, make some modifications to the signal to adjust it to bring the overall cycle length down. It was running at 140-second cycle length, you know, over two minutes. So a pedestrian possibly could wait up to two minutes to get their walk signal. What I was able to do is, is uh, reprogram it, bring the cycle length down to 90 seconds. So I've shaved 47, 45 seconds off of the overall signal length. And it also helps with the queue lengths on the approaches. It shortens those up as well because vehicles don't have to wait as long for their green light to come up. So overall, it's made a, a quicker signal length and uh, so the pedestrians don't have to wait as long when they, when they press the button to cross. The, it still stays the same. All traffic stops when the pedestrian pushes the button and they get the chance to cross. You know, we also looked at the possibility of a, a crosswalk at this fourth location where there is no crosswalk. But there's concerns at this location because of the blind corner, the, these vehicles parked in this lot. Uh, when vehicles are coming up Bartlett Street making a, a right turn, they're often just looking to their left to see what's coming from Islington Street. They're not looking to the right to see if a pedestrian is stepping off the curb here. It's a blind corner. And there's also no sidewalk along this side of uh, Bartlett Street because of the, the limited width under the railroad bridge. So we don't get a lot of pedestrian traffic coming up this way looking to cross. They're already on the other side of the street. So for those reasons, we don't feel it's a safe alternative to, to put a crosswalk in at this location. I mean, when a pedestrian pushes this button, it does stop all traffic. And if they want to, they can step off the curb and, and cross this direction. But we don't feel it, we don't recommend it. That's why there's no painted crosswalk at that location. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, sir. And there's no motion on that. Uh, loading zones, request to lengthen time to one hour by business owner. Uh, sample motion moved to place on file. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Well, yes, um, because the issue keeps coming up about the loading zones. Came up last meeting. Oh, this is in response to last meeting. Okay, it's a response to put it on file. Yeah, so we looked but at it. Okay. Um, and really there's a, a conflict uh, the particular business that was in here does two things they they provide supplies like a beer right, right. You know, food distributor would right. but they also provide service like right. an electrician or a plumber would right and the way it works in Portsmouth is if you're actively loading on loading say your 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 soda or your loaves of bread you can use a loading zone if you're an electrician or a plumber and you go in to work on something you have to pay for parking this is a unique situation where the person is starting out in one mode and then transfers to a different mode and right. we can't create a policy that unfavor 
you know, unfairly favors just one business because they have a unique set of circumstances. Um, so if we were to start increasing loading zone times to account for service, we'd probably have, you know, plumbers and electricians in here saying, well, I only take an hour to change the light bulb. Why do I have to pay? And, you know, the, the purpose of the loading zone is active loading and unloading. I and get that. That's why I'm commenting on it. Oh, okay. Because on uh, Daniel Street, the loading zone has been used and continues to be used as a working space so that there are vans for the brickyard building. Mm -hmm. um, that pull up there where their equipment is in the van and they're in and out working saws equipment there. So I see that often enough to wonder, are they really loading, unloading? That's an enforcement issue, Mary Lou? Yeah. There are, there are instances where those folks have actually taken, um, purchased that space to be able to utilize it. So, you know, it's reserved and purchased, and they, they displace elsewhere. But that's an ongoing challenge with a lot of the loading zones yeah. uh, with developers that are using spaces. Exactly. So that's, that's really an enforcement issue. That's not okay. a loading zone issue. Okay. So my question was about the use of the loading zone is really bringing it up at this point, yeah, and the use of the loading zone. Sure, and that, as, yes. as the chair pointed out, it's really for lo active loading and unloading. Yeah. So they can actually purchase... That's loading space for a period of time and use it as a working space. Yeah, so we have, if you looked at the financial report, the second item is meter space rental, and we're at $193,230, um, three quarters of the way through the year, and we budgeted for 150000 so we're well over right. the expected. And some of that has to do, I won't speak to Daniel Street specifically, but when there, somebody rents a series of parking spaces, uh, like where the old whale wall is, they pay the city for that. And then they can, you know, they more or less can use it however they need to. Sometimes it's for scaffolding, but other times it's to bring in trucks. Because okay. um, earlier I spoke about electricians and plumbers. If they're working in the building, it's one thing. If they're, you know, digging up the sidewalk and working right there, it, in a lot of cases it may make sense for the van or the truck to be there just due to the nature of the work that they're doing. Okay. But they are supposed to pay for it. Okay, so I wanted to clarify this because I looked up Article 6, Chapter 7, and it says only vehicles actually engaged in loading or unloading of product, merchandise, or equipment may park in a loading zone, not to exceed 30 minutes. So we're right. modifying if this. If they're doing work, as you say, then they should have paid for it. And if they didn't, it's an enforcement issue. And I, I think if it was like some sort of emergency repair, there might be some discretion, but normally we would you know, inform them that they need to, to get a permit for that. Okay. Enforcement is good. Thank you. Yep. Um, and I believe that was a motion. So any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. We are cruising through the meeting today. Moving right along. Um, C. One, one, yeah, C. Loading zones report back on sharing loading zones as parking inventory at designated times by DPW. Move to approve changes in parking hours at specified loading zones. Do you want to speak to this one briefly? Sure. This is a trial that we started last year, and uh, we were looking, watching it through the summer and into the year, and now it's, it's come up to a year. We need to, uh, you know, formalize it make, and uh, and we have some results from the, if you'd like to hear from that, Ben has the information on that. Otherwise, it's, uh, we've seen success with the program allowing people to, instead of starting to park in loading zones at 7 p.m., we moved it up to 3 p.m. in certain loading zones. Good. That generates additional revenue for the city and frees up more parking for people to park downtown. Yes. So that seems like a fairly easy one. Yep. Any questions? Erica? We're just formalizing the I remember we talked about this kind of at length, right. and this is just kind of reinforcing that it's a good idea. There's yeah, it was a trial measure. Trial, we tried it out. It, it seems to be working well. We did exclude one loading zone at Penn Hollow Street due to some resident feedback, and so we didn't include that in the trial. But all the other ones that we proposed, we did change the signs out there to say three o'clock parking is allowed, and we monitored it, and it seems to be working well. Great. All right. All those in favor? Excuse me. Oh. I don't yep. have a motion. I have a motion. Oh. <laughs> I move to approve the change in parking hours. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Sorry about that. 
um, informational uh, monthly accident report from the deputy chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, in March, uh, there were 73 total crashes uh, within the city. 46 of those 73 were reportable. We had no instances of uh, motor vehicles versus bicycle crashes. We had one instant, one instance of a motor vehicle versus a pedestrian crash, um, which was already discussed. Uh, the particulars of that one we, the committee discussed last month. All right, that's it. Thank you. Any questions for the chief? All right. Um, McKinley Road update on tracking traffic calming measures. Hard to see. Uh, this is an update. There was a so questions raised at a recent ward meeting as to uh, traffic calming measures in the neighborhood. And there was a study done back in 2020, and this was a pre report prepared by the city's consultant identifying traffic calming measures, including sidewalks, uh, possible speed tables, or <coughs> mini roundabouts at a couple of locations, or raised intersections, and uh, intersection reconfigurations at some odd ge geometric locations. And so this is a, this was the final report and recommendations and what the next step on this is to bring this to design and construction and we believe it's in the CIP for next year. We'd be beginning the design next year as, as well as the sidewalk construction projects. The traffic calming could be done separately but it makes the most sense probably to do them all together, constructing them at the same time. So it hasn't been forgotten, it's just been waiting for funding and getting the whole project done at once. Great. And then I assume there'll be some public meetings sometime in the summer or fall maybe or winter time? As, as we, we get, get closer. The, as we start the yeah. design. Okay. Well, stay tuned for that, but it's a little ways off in the future, but I do believe you're correct. If the CIP passes, um, or if the budget passes with the CIP as it is, it's funded for next year. Mm -hmm. um, Bartlett Street at Thornton Street, update on the temporary roundabout trial. Yes, uh, we've got, okay, this is a, a picture from, it was constructed uh, two weeks ago today, and uh, it's been in place since then, and we've been monitoring it with traffic cameras, and I do have some uh, video I can show you of that. It appears to be uh, working well. Uh, Chief brought the uh, tri fire truck up and, and made some runs through here. Uh, this is the ladder truck coming through straight up on Bartlett Street. And it, I, I believe it, it avoided the curb. This is coming in from, from Woodbury down Thornton Street into the circle. I don't know, Chief, if you have any comments to add to this, but uh, it appears that he made it through. Yeah, he was able to make it through. Um, obviously, you know, uh, going straight across is the easier way. The, uh, this truck, particular truck, is our, uh, our largest wheel-based vehicle. Um, you can see here where he's got to make the... Uh, uh -huh. Make the turn, it's the only way to do it. It's not pretty, but it works, mm -hmm. right? And uh, um, the uh, the asphalt there and the curbing is uh, designed so that we can drive over it, and as you saw, he was able to do it. And this is the coast bus that comes through on a regular basis. <clears throat> and this is the coast bus coming inbound direction. So they're able to make it around the circle without going up on the curbing. That was, was one of our design intents, was to not have to have the bus come up on the curb every single time they come through. This is the Wildcat bus from UNH. Similar dimensions, able to make it through. Uh, the school bus, this is uh, during the construction, they were concerned, so we let them into the construction zone and made a trial run through here just to make sure they could do it and they, they made it through with plenty of clearance. They were afraid of that utility pole in the corner, but they had several feet clearance from that. <clears throat> they, they did originally come through making a left turn, but that didn't work, so I think I believe they've changed their stop to, to allow the bus to come through. And here's an illegal left, I mean, <laughs> illegal tractor trailer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you can see they, they are going up on the yeah, curb. Yeah. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of them. I think it, this truck actually came the other direction at first and was, yep, here he is. Wow. So that's, he's, he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big vehicle. That was yeah. a crowd that size. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's concern about not being able to get trailers around the circle, so here's a, a pickup truck pulling a, a small trailer, utility trailer, able to get three quarters away around the circle. And this is you know, a sample of vehicles coming at the same time and you know, both yielding. They're, they're, it's cautious. They're, you know, drivers take some time to get used to the new configuration. They're used to the four-way stop, so they're still sort of doing that until they realize they don't have to stop and they can yield. Eric, sorry, can yep. you share this? There are people on Zoom texting me. They're not seeing this. Yeah, I, there's a problem with the oh, Zoom okay. that we're not able to. Okay. It's only on the screen here. So that was a trash truck coming through. We can get that posted. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I tried to include in the, the pack. It was just okay. the video file was too large. This is a truck making it three quarters of the way around the circle. <clears throat> There's another large pickup with a larger trailer. That didn't slow him down much. No, we've yes. also been. Uh, we set up a speed recorder out here, and we're seeing average speeds of 16 miles an hour when they're going straight through 85th percentiles of 19 miles an hour. So it's below the posted speed limit of 20. There's this, this one pedestrian. Yep, and he was using the new crosswalk. <laughs> he <laughs> changed his mind when he got to that point. He said, Where am I going? <laughs> Eric, are you measuring speeds in the roundabout or like we, on the we road? We have the, the camera is just off to the right of the screen. Yeah. It's, it's up here off on a telephone pole measuring this traffic coming through the circle. It's not, not picking up the traffic going around the circle, but just coming straight through. So that, that's the traffic that's going at 16, 16 mm -hmm. to 19. I sat on Bartlett and on Thornton a couple of different times at different times of the day, too. And uh, I was surprised at how fast the traffic comes off Woodbury onto Thornton. They really fly and then suddenly realize that there's a change here. But I also was impressed at how slowly people came cautiously to the roundabout. It, they weren't flying up to a stop sign. Um, they, it was slow coming around the circle, the roundabout, and then leaving the roundabout. So mm -hmm. um, We have seen some people intentionally driving over the top just oh. for fun or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> or taking a left in front of the uh, the circle, you know, at, at times they'll come up Bartlett and, t and cut left in front and then go up the wrong way up Thornton oh. just because they're not sure if they can make it around the circle possibly. Oh. Um, and, and, you know, some people get frustrated. They come around the circle and then when they get out of it, they hit the gas to try and make noise. Oh, I hadn't you know, seen that. Typical of yep. traffic calming measures. Hey, Harold? Yeah, just one question. When they go up and over on the roundabout, do they do any damage? Uh, do the, the, the public works have to go out there and make repairs or anything like that? No, it's, it has a gravel base and it has asphalt on top of that. It's made to withstand traffic driving over. That was the intent of having that circle. Yeah, thank you. Have the butters been vocal on this at all, reached out to you? Uh, the, the one here in this corner, I've heard from them directly, but uh, not the others. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes, I did have phone calls. I had uh, several calls from one person who lives on Bartlett Street, Wayne Jones, who had many concerns, but he's opposed to this. He thinks it's a waste of uh, taxpayer money, and he doesn't feel it's a safe way to manage this intersection. Um, he's concerned about many things on Bartlett Street that were not specific to the roundabout. Um, and a call from a woman named Ryan Lemire, who also is a Bartlett Street resident, who said this is okay, but she had other things to talk about Bartlett Street, which were all part of the neighborhood concerns. Yes, and I would encourage anybody that wants to know about Bartlett Street, because there are more projects coming up. There, if you go to the city website, there's the Bartlett Street project. Yep. You can put your email address in there, and you'll be updated about all the things and any meetings that we have before we do things. So I would encourage anybody yep. interested in this intersection to do that. So I basically, will. yeah. So basically, those were the, the comments that came in. Yeah. Um, and so I have gotten uh, emails and, and, and uh, about <clears throat> people concerned with it. One resident you know, went out and got petition signatures from six other residents who didn't like it as well. Mm -hmm. So I have that. Have we seen a reduction in traffic volume? One, I don't think a reduction. We haven't had a chance to look at the volumes yet, but what we have noticed is that 
where we used to have 90% of the traffic coming up and taking a left from Bartlett on to Thornton, more traffic is now going straight up to Dennett Street. It's still more traffic is going left, but there is a higher number of vehicles going straight through. Probably about double the number that used to go straight through. Okay. Mark? Eric, those uh, residents that are given uh, non-favorable input, do they have any of their own ideas on how to, how to make it? They, they liked the four-way stop. They were familiar with the four-way stop. Right. Okay. So, they, so it's all based on what they're used to, and it's the change. Yep. Uncertainty of how to drive through a circle like this. Right. That's what I heard also. I was concerned, excuse me, um, on the crosswalks. Um, I don't think they're visible enough. Uh, people are looking at the yellow and black new um, triangles and circle, and I'm wondering what we can do about the crosswalks. There are no signs on either side that say cross here. Um, and I, I think the white is not evident enough, the white stripes. The, the, this is what's the term, this, these are called high visibility crosswalk, this type of striping, because they are more, they're not just the two stripes across that you have the piano yeah. thing type of setup, so it is more visible than normal. You know, it, it, that is something we could add, is possibly more uh, pedestrian signage out there. I'm just, I'm just looking at the, the safety aspects of it. Um, and uh, Ryan Lemire did talk about the safety of the crosswalks, that that is a heavy pedestrian area, although with all of this video, we've only seen one pedestrian. Yeah, so, in so our counts, we have not seen a lot. I mean, the most we've seen is 10 pedestrians crossing one crosswalk yeah. in an hour. It's so, Mr. Chair, it, it should be noted this is a pilot that's informing right, the final exactly. design. So, you know, all those things will be taken into consideration. Obviously, yep. sa safety is, you know, the first thing that we look at. Um, so, we believe this is so far have been, um, you know, positive relative to uh, traffic calming. Um, so, we will continue to monitor and, and uh, when we go to the, the final, um, when we bid it, we'll have a, a decision and a better informed um, and make modifications if necessary. It sounds good. And just on a lighter note, my daughter's going to be 16 in July, so she has about five hours of driving. Uh -huh. And uh, she's driving mom's SUV up to the roundabout, and I didn't warn her. Um, she did it just fine, although she thought it was uh, the stupidest idea ever, I believe was her <laughs> quote. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then we came back and did it a couple more times, and she was able to go all the way around and three-quarters of the way around with no issue. So it's you know, that was fault. tricky. It's your fault because Dad told me. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. And the, the total material cost on this was about 7000 You know, just the history lesson. Going out on one road back in the day, I remember when they put in the, the Sagmore Circle. That didn't have an experiment like this. Mm -hmm. They rolled that out. People were outraged. And then eventually, you know, so mm -hmm. it's a little different, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's tighter, smaller. It's not as open space. But um, I think there's more people who are more optimistic not saying in favor, but they're more optimistic than pessimists about this. It's going to take time, though. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, it's important to note that there, this is not something unique or new. Um, there are many communities across the country that you know, use this as a very standard practice. Um, so it, it, we're not creating, we're not inventing um, something new. And, and just one last comment before I move on to the next item is, you know, what we're trying to do is slow down traffic and get people to pay attention. And generally speaking, people don't like to be slowed down or told they have to focus more. So by nature of doing what we're trying to do, people are likely to become upset or annoyed with it. Yeah. So all moving on. Like, all people like me don't want to see changes. <laughs> I think it's nearly universal. Um, Market Street update on closure for the utility project. I guess that's the commercial alley, Market Street. Yeah, so Market Street is progressing. Um, it's knock on wood, it's going fairly well. Uh, there is going to be a uh, an opening uh, of a trench at the intersection of Daniel and Market, right at Market Square, uh, that will allow for some construction work that was not anticipated, uh, but it, it should not extend the time frame with which the work is being done. You'll see a lot of activity starting uh, on Monday next week, and we anticipate that hopefully within the week um, most of that work will be completed and we'll be able to open up um, the roadway again. Yeah. The, the change is that instead of just being closed during the day, it'll be closed 24-7 yep. next week. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's to facilitate um, repairs to the sewer line uh, that were identified during the um, initial work. 
but businesses and, and sidewalks and pedestrian access will remain open. Okay. All right. Um, outdoor dining barrier placement update. Okay, we've got our first several uh, applications approved, and we're looking to place the barriers out for Thirsty Moose and the on in front of the Bagel Works in the coming days. And the next ones after that will likely be Jumpin' Jays and the Goat on Congress Street. Um, so we're, it's starting to ramp up now. I think if we ever get some dry weather, we'll <laughs> see higher demand. <laughs> All right, thank you. And the bicycle rodeo and mayor's bike ride on May 20th. I think that's an informational. Um, that's Saturday, right? I should I know this. My believe that's the correct. Um, the, so the bicycle rodeo is being uh, done by the rec or facilitated by the rec department, uh, and they're helping um, as well with the mayor's ride. Um, so that's that should be a, a good event. Yeah, and they'll both be held at the Little Harbor School. <laughs> The, the, the mayor's ride will begin and end at the Little Harbor School. And if I understand correctly, the bicycle rodeo, that would be a good ch chance for parents to bring their kids <coughs> and their bikes and see to make sure that they're in good shape for spraying and the helmets fit and all that kind of stuff. Yep, some basic safety training, things like that, awareness. Great. Um, I helped run a bike rodeo in one of my prior lives, and they're really great events. I mean, it's really usually a fun like it's done in a way that gets kids to learn about, you know, how to start a bike safely and stop a bike safely and, you know, all sorts of little biking tips in a kind of festival environment. So Great. Well, encourage I people to go, yeah. We had a big turnout for the mayor's ride last year. I think it was 70, 75 people. Um, so hopefully we'll have a bigger turnout this year and the weather will be uh, <laughs> nice. And then uh, miscellaneous. Harold, I know you have one. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for allowing me to t speak about this issue. But uh, I've been on various committees, and I feel this is one of the most important ones in the whole city. But I, I feel that also that the, the, a lot of things coming from the city council now is passed on to the Park and Traffic and Safety Committee, you know? So that's why I feel that uh, the, the city manager should be here, really. Uh, uh, Karen's done a, a tremendous job since she's taken the position, and I, I, I was wondering how the rest of the council feels about Karen, the <coughs> city manager, being here at our meeting. Because you know, a lot of things, really, like I say, uh, passed on from the city council to us, and she has a lot of input. So uh, can so maybe I, I, I might be the only one, but I've been around a long time, and I've served on a lot of committee, and, and this is probably the most important one of all I've been on. Thank you. Thanks, Harold. And I so, Mr. Chair, um, it you know the the manager has <coughs> multiple staff um, that are keeping her informed, and that she's well represented here, and it's it's not <coughs> historically. Uh, the manager has assigned folks to be here for her stead. Um, you know, she, as you can imagine, has a lot of demands, and anything we can do to help uh, keep her sanity um, and, and, and allow her to get her job done. Um, not that this is not a very important committee, uh, but there are a lot of bigger, bigger things that she has to focus on. Yeah. Um, and you know, we are you know, we are fortunate uh, to have staff to be able to to fill in and. You know, I, I respectfully disagree. Uh, I think she's well represented, and um, we, she served well. Yeah. Oh, just a thought. That's all. Yep. I, I didn't know how the rest of the council felt. Yeah, I understand your point. I can't speak for the rest of the council. Um, I, the the demands on the city manager's time are yep. are basically twenty four seven and tremendous. So uh, the fact that we have so many department uh, representatives here uh, that she works with constantly, I think. Okay. You know, it, it would be great if she could be here, but the reality is, is there's just too many demands on her time. Anything. Thank you for allowing me to bring this up. Yeah, of course. And Mary Lou? Yes, question for Ben. And it has to do with the receipts that uh, from the kiosks, uh, the parking kiosks. And I, I never park downtown, so I have not been aware of this, but it was brought to my attention that um, someone received a parking ticket because they didn't have the receipt on the dashboard. But 
What's that? Sorry. Ben, why don't you why don't you come up to the speak to it in the mic? What? I park mobile. Yeah, I, I, just, I just don't park that <laughs> So there's, it's a chance that they parked in one of the private lots that still do pay on display, but we do pay by plate. So I don't know all the, thank you. The dash receipt's the not details, necessary. But um, I checked on that because uh, I was parking with a friend, and down at the very bottom of the receipt, in this minuscule letters, it says, place on dash fat face up. But in December of 2019, the decision was that we weren't going to have receipts. It's a choice at this point. You can ask for a receipt from the device or not. The uh, the plate owns the session, so right. there's no need to actually display now. Right. Because the enforcement officer will come up and punch in the plate number. Yes. In fact, they don't look at the dash at all. Um, actually, one of the meter readers told me that he does look at the dash. Some, if he pulls up... Do. If he pulls up the plate and it's not accurate, it's not the same number as he has recorded, then he will look on the dash to see if there's a, a receipt there, and he goes by that. So I, I just think in the private lots, they do not give receipts. I'm, I'm not sure why we're doing receipts, is my point. If we are doing, we're doing pay receipts by plate, on request. Pardon me? If you request a receipt from the device, it will print you one. It does not print you one automatically. We're, we're basically phasing them out slowly. Yeah. Well, okay. But I would think that we would enforce the pay by plate, which is what the meter reader said. But then he said he goes to the dashboard to see if somebody has a receipt there. And if their receipt says that they have X number of minutes left, but the plate number is wrong, he doesn't give them a ticket. The trouble you run into there, and we're working with this through our training, is um, you will find certain residents that understand that they can get the first six hours as opposed to the first three hours at $2 if they slightly change their plate number and put it on the dash. Oh. And then we say, oh, gosh, they just made an error. And then they'll go and use Park Mobile to do the second set of three, uh, first three hours. So uh, we're, we're, we're kind of working away from, <laughs> just, we're, we're working away from using dash tickets at all, uh, regardless of whether it's a one digit off or what have you. So, well, um, I thought that we had. It, it still happens. I've got some folks that have been uh, in position for 10, 12 years that yeah. have a certain way that they like to do things. Uh, but we, we are training away from that because okay. we are seeing some of these shenanigans. That, well, I uh, would that think that do. we can eliminate the receipts altogether because if somebody's if using you don't your, ask for one it doesn't your, print one i know but then at the bottom it says to put it on your dash if you print it yeah you why have don't to, we we can choose bring this up i mean this is a well i don't think we're going to solve it in the next two minutes here so well, we've, we've the question's confusing. been identified and we can sure bring it back in a future meeting we had eliminated the receipts that's my point if you don't ask for one it doesn't print one mary lou i like getting receipts because sometimes i need it for work yeah. well some folks yeah that's why you say then yes you can get it yeah. right but you can get it on your credit card too anyway i can't submit it's a longer discussion than yeah, we want I, today yes <laughs> uh erica um i was hoping we could get an update at the middle road middle street <clears throat> construction it looks like maybe we're making that slip lane into a park i love it Yes, the, uh, where it had been blocked off of the Jersey barriers, that's becoming a permanent island there. Great. All of the, yeah. Reconfiguring it slightly that's to make great. it an easier turn for trucks, making that right turn from Middle Street onto Middle Road. Super. That's what's happening out there. Is that whole area going to get filled in then? It will become landscaped area. Okay. The, the sidewalk will remain as it is. But Great. Yeah. Let's Very keep good. doing that with all the funny pork chops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One, one other item I'd like to mention yes. is the uh, the store at 147 Congress Street, at the corner of Maplewood and Congress. Yes. Will be uh, undergoing renovations and reconstruction, and as part of that work, the sidewalks on Maplewood and Congress at that corner will be closed off to pedestrians. They'll That's where the health food store used to be. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That will go on for is it a month or two? It's it's a good amount of period. They're going to work to open up the Congress Street sidewalk first. <laughs> Until I need but it. Maplewood <laughs> sidewalk will be meant closed. Okay. okay. Um, and when that court, when those two sidewalks are closed, there will be no access to that crosswalk to the Bridge Street lot. Oh. Pedestrians will need to use the other crosswalks at the intersection. Can we put a sign up at the Bridge Street lot letting people know to walk towards oh, the yeah. mall? There will be signs okay. put up. Yeah. And the, the pedestrian signal heads and the buttons will be covered over so that people aren't tempted to use them. 
And we are working also at upgrading the signal equipment to the intersection to add a flashing right arrow for coming down Congress Street and moving the signal heads around so that there'll be more indication to drivers that they need to yield to pedestrians making that turn. Okay, great. And as well as uh, increase, changing the video, changing to a video system at the signal rather than the wire loops to sense cars in the road, there'll be video to watch the vehicles and it'll also give us the ability to count pedestrians and observe things 24 7 at the intersection. That's great. Yep. All right. Um, yeah, I guess. No. All, all done. All done. Um, looks like Mark's raising his hands next to you. Know what, I'm going to ask Ben and Peter a question, but I won't do it on the time here. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, I'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion okay. to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone.